the advanced level of probability is discussing now probability is a quantitative measure of possibility but its application is little complex or little difficult for the simplified computation of probability problems usually we use three theorems one is addition theorem on probability multiplication theorem and bayes theorem to explain theorems of probability we need some basic concepts about the events let a be an event its non occurrence is denoted by a bar where a bar is termed as complementary event of a the what are the properties of a and a bar p of a denotes probability of the occurrence of a a bar probability of the occurrence of a bar non occurrence of a then a and a bar are mutually exclusive simultaneous occurrence of a and a bar in a single trial is impossible for example success and failure in a single trial that is p of a and a bar is zero then what about a or a bar that is certain therefore probability of a or a bar is 1 then we consider the cases case of two events if a and b are any two events the simultaneous occurrence or joint occurrence is denoted by ab ab is termed as compound event compound event then the possibility of compound event related to a and b what are they a a bar it's complementary b b bar it's complementary then if a and b are any two events we have four possibilities one is the joint occurrence ab and a and b bar occurrence of a and non occurrence of b a bar and b non occurrence of a and occurrence of b and non occurrence of both a and b that is a bar and b bar we need further concepts to arrive at theorems of probability that is about the composition of a random experiment random experiment is the starting point of probability analysis an experiment where the outcomes are uncertain but the total possibilities are known in advance and we have three types of two types of random experiments two types one is simultaneous trials and the other is repeated trials simultaneous trials and repeated trials example tossing of three coins together that is a single trial three coins are tossed once three students are appearing in an examination that is in these two examples we have only one random experiment what about the sample space of the second example success three students are appearing success to the first student success to the second student success to the, to the third student success success to the first and second failure to the sec third yes for success and yes for failure and again the repeated trials a coin is tossed three times then the random experiment is repeated for three times tossing of a coin repeated for three times a student is appearing in three examinations appearing in an examination is a random experiment a student is appearing in three different examinations so the random experiment is repeated sample space is same same sample spaces are in these two examples are appearing identical but their composition is different their analysis is different their nature is different the students of management studies requires some minimum basic concepts of these theorems we discuss three theorems now 
One is adhesion theorem. That is for simultaneous trials. That is for simultaneous trials. A coin is tossed three times. Three coins are tossed are different. Remember that point. Only one trial, simultaneous trial. Three coins are tossed together. That is simultaneous trials. If a coin is tossed three times, repeated, we use multiplication theorem. That is addition theorem for simultaneous trials, multiplication theorem for repeated trials. This is the basic difference between these two theorems. And one more, to improve the quality of decision making, based on the past experience, to improve, we use Bayes theorem. It is theorem of inverse probability. In simple terms, we are going to define addition theorem. Addition theorem for two events A and B. This is sufficient for the students of management faculty. The statement is that for any two events, for any two events denoted by A and B, probability of the occurrence of either A or B, A or B is given by, this is a statement, P of A or B, probability of the occurrence of either A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of AB. This is the addition theorem for two events A and B. And there is a condition. If A and B are mutually exclusive, if their simultaneous occurrence is impossible, then probability of AB is zero. Then if A and B are mutually exclusive, P of A or B is P of A plus P of B. This is the addition theorem for two events. Now we are explaining addition theorem. P of A or B is P of A plus P of B minus P of AB. That is a statement. We know that if A and B are any two events, there are different combinations of A and B. One is AB, the joint occurrence of AB, A and B. AB bar, the compound event of A and non-occurrence of B. A bar B, non-occurrence of A and occurrence of B and non-occurrence of both. There is A bar and B bar. And using these concepts, we are trying to illustrate visually the addition theorem. By means of a Venn diagram, we are illustrating visually. So the totality, the sample space is ex expressed by a square, that is a sample space. And in that sample space, the two events are illustrated by means of diagrams, circles, by means of circles, circle A, circle B, and there is a possibility of joint occurrence A and B. So this is a partially overlapping diagram of two events A and B. The area is less illustrated in the diagram and this area marked with green ink is the area representing the occurrence of A and non-occurrence of B, A and B bar. The compound area, common area is the joint occurrence of A and B. And this area marked with the green, uh, blue ink is the non-occurrence of A and occurrence of B, A bar B. The area outside circle represents the non-occurrence of both A and B. So we use area property, area property, area illustration. Then using this area illustration, what is AB bar? AB bar is A minus AB. A minus AB is the area AB bar. Therefore, probability of AB bar from the circle A, we subtract area AB, P of A minus P of AB. Similarly, A bar B from the circle B, we remove the combo, common area AB. Probability of A bar B minus P of A is equal to P of B minus P of AB. Probability of A bar B is equal to P of B minus P of AB. 
Then again from the area property. What is A plus B? A or B or A plus B is P of A B bar. This portion plus P of A B plus P of A bar B. A visual experience. A visual evidence. Then P of A B bar. Replacing by P of A minus P of A B. Plus this P of A B. And P of A bar B is replaced by P of B minus P of A B. Then we get P of A plus P of B minus P of A B. That is P of A or B is P of A plus P of B minus P of A B. This is a mathematical proof also for this addition theorem. And one more thing. What is the area outside this A bar B bar? What is A bar B bar? That is area outside the circle. That is the non-occurrence of A bar. B bar means non-occurrence of both A, B. That is 1 minus P of A plus B. P of A plus B or 1 minus P of A or B. That is by the addition theorem. 1 minus. Why? Since A bar B bar is equal to S minus A plus B. Where S is the total area. That is P of A bar B bar is equal to 1 minus P of A or B. Hence all the components of this diagram is illustrated. And this is the mathematical evidence to addition theorem. The multiplication theorem. That is for compound events. The joint occurrence of events. So it is also known as theorem of compound probability. It is for repeated trials. Addition theorem for simultaneous trials and multiplication theorem for repeated trials. Then we are defining multiplication theorem for two events. For two events A and B. There are two conditions of occurrence. That is A given B. A given and B given A. There is a conditional events. What is A given B? That is in the case of a compound situation. The happening of the event A under the condition that B has happened already. The occurrence of A after the occurrence of B. Similarly, B given A. The happening of the event B under the condition that A has happened already. And these two events are known as conditional events. And their probabilities are called conditional probability. Then by definition, probability of A given B is equal to P of AB by P of B. And P of B given A is equal to P of AB by P of A. Where AB is the joint event, compound event. So multiplication theorem for compound event. The statement of multiplication theorem is stated here for two events A and B. For any two events A and B, the probability of joint occurrence of AB, joint occurrence of AB, this is the multiplication theorem, is given by P of AB, probability of the compound event, P of A into P of B given A. P of AB is equal to the product multiplication, P of A into probability of B given A. And this is the probability of the conditional event. That is, the event A has already happened. Then probability of B after the occurrence of A. That is, P of AB is equal to P of A into P of B given A. Or, at first we get B, P of B and, and into probability of A given B. Probability of A given B. That is, occurrence of probability of A based on the information that B has already occurred. Then one condition, if probability of B given A does not require the information about A, if it is equal to P of B and P of A given B is equal to P of A, then the events A and B are called independent events, independent the subsequent informations are not required. They are independent.
then statement of multiplication theorem for any two events A and B, the probability of the simultaneous occurrence or joint occurrence of A and B denoted by P of A, B is P of A into P of B given A or P of B into P of A given B. If A and B are independent, P of A, B is P of A into P of B. And the condition probabilities are P of A given B is equal to P of A, B by P of B and P of B given A is equal to P of A, B by P of A. So we discuss the two theorems. One is addition theorem for simultaneous trials and multiplication theorem for repeated trials. Then we are going to discuss the application of both these theorems. It is termed as Bayes theorem. Now we try to introduce Bayes theorem. A theorem on inverse probability or a theorem on posterior probability. That is highly useful to managers to improve the quality of decision making. That is the significance of Bayes theorem to the managers. It is highly useful in improving the quality of decision making based on our experience. Let us discuss at first the theoretical steps. Let A1, A2, X3, A and B a sequence of mutually exclusive and exhaustive events. Mutually exclusive and exhaustive. That is probability of A1 or A2 or etc. A and is equal to probability of A1 plus probability of A2 etc. plus probability of A n is equal to 1. That is the importance. Probability of A1 is known in advance. Probability of A2 is known in advance. That is a set of mutually exclusive events whose probabilities are known in advance. Then we are going to define another event. That event is not independent. It is dependent. It occurs only in association with A1 or A2 or etc. or An. That event is denoted by B. B. Try to understand the significance of B. B is not an independent event. B cannot occur independently. B occur only in association with A1 or A2 or etc. or An. So what is the probability of occurring B? That is with A1, probability of A1B or with A2 plus A2B or etc. with An, ANB. Then we know the multiplication theorem. That is P of A1 into P of B given A1 etc. And it is mathematically expressed as a sum. Sigma I varies from 1 to N P of AI into P of B given AI. Where P of A1, A2 etc. P of B given A1 etc. are known. All these components are known. The basic importance is B cannot occur independently. Therefore, finally, the inverse probability P of AI I given B. What is the occurrence of AI? Subject to the information that B has already happened is equal to P of AIB by P of B by definition. That is P of AI into P of B given AI by P of B. All the ingredients are known. We have to calculate only the conditional probability. It is known as the posterior probability. Inverse probability. It is based on evidence. Inverse probability or posterior probability based on the evidence. So this is the application. This is the statement of Bayes theorem. It is highly useful in improving the quality of decision making. For students of Manum studies, this theoretical steps are not significant. They have to know, they have to perform the problems belonging to the category of Bayes theorem to find inverse probability or to find posterior probability or to find some conditional probability. In a nutshell, the components of Bayes theorem, one elementary events 
A1, A2, etc. AM. That is the first component, a sequence of elementary events. Then for each elementary event, its probability is known. They are termed as prior probability. Before entering an experiment or before performing an experiment, we know the probabilities of P of A1, P of A2. They are known as prior probabilities and the total probability is equal to 1. So it is a sequence of mutually exclusive and exhaustive. So it is 1. Then second, now how is about the conditional probability. An event associated with these elementary events, let it be B. Then the condition probability P of B given AI. These condition probabilities are also known. Known from past experience. P of B given AI is known from past experience. Then we find joint probability. P of A1 into P of B given A1. P of A2 into P of B given A2. We calculate the joint probability. Then sum of that, we get the total probability. Sigma, sum of this sigma for total. Sigma I varies from 1 to N. Then what is the purpose of Bayes' theorem? To find inverse probability or revised probability or posterior. Prior means before, post means after. After the posterior probability denoted by P of AI given B. The Bayes' theorem is used to improve the quality of decision making using the past behavior and present accomplishments. That is a simple direct logic. Here the past behavior is observed by condition or sample information and by present prior probabilities. So the purpose of Bayes theorem for managers is to improve quality of decision making using prior and conditional probabilities or conditional events. The statement is P of AI given B is equal to P of AI into P of B given AI by sigma P of AI into P of B given AI discussed earlier. And for the students of management category, we use a table, we use a tabular arrangement for the easy computation of posterior probability or inverse probability or revised probability. What are the components? The first component is elementary events. They are given, they are specified, they are defined. And their corresponding probabilities are known in advance. So they are called prior probabilities. And some is one. They are mutually exclusive, equally, equally and exhaustive cases. Mutually exclusive and exhaustive cases. And then conditional probabilities are given. They are sample information. Past experience, they are given. P of B given A1. The sum is not necessary. Then we find the product of this. That is the joint probability. And the sum of this joint probability is the denominator. That is a sigma P of A into P of B given A. That is a probability of the event B. Then we find the posterior probability. This value divided by this. This value divided by this. And sum of that column is 1. We illustrate this table with a numerical problem in the coming session. So this is the theorems under probability. Theorems of probability. Addition theorem, multiplication theorem and base theorem. A general know-how of these theorems are sufficient for the students of management category. Now we are concluding this session. We discussed three theorems of probability which are required for performing numerical problems for the students of management studies. In the next session, we illustrate numerical problems which are solved by addition theorem, multiplication theorem and base theorem.